uh, the town aware that uh, capital improvement uh, committee and um, this is uh, October 6 2021 and uh, we're going to hear from the where fire department because we got the table online there we go there we go thank you Thank you, Mr. Fireman. <laughs> okay, so the first, as, as uh, you've seen before, we try to go out several years Yep. Um, because we have large equipment that's pretty expensive to try and uh, give a good picture of what's going on. So the first item is uh, ambulance replacement. And, <coughs> excuse me? Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Okay, I'll give you the rest of that. Okay. Sorry about that. I told you I was a poor fill-in, so. Um, so the first one that we're looking at is uh, ambulance replacement, and um, that um, is we moved that to this year. Um, we've noticed as we try to manage the fleet that our ambulance usage has gone up because of the increased call volume, et cetera, of the uh, department, and um, so that uh, we moved up to this year. Um, it was put in the budget for 350000 which is an increase um, with everything that's going on, steel, components, all of that stuff. Um, we're not even sure we could get it this year, um, so we're, we're trying to be prepared for it um, and be proactive with it. Our other one does have... Uh, higher miles than it should have at this age. How many miles does it have? I, do we have the miles, Beth? I don't. <coughs> well, she's looking that, that up. Showed up today. Yeah. What, what yeah. year was it in? You said you moved up. You just moved up a year. Yeah. Okay, so it was in 2023. Yes. To, yeah. okay. I believe so. <coughs> no. Well, you can get that for us, right? We can get that. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> so we, we have, um, we put it in for this year, the whole amount, but we have to look at whether or not it's prudent to spend down the revenue fund that the money comes from, or if we, like, is it to our advantage to try and stretch it out a year or two? instead of deplete the fund um, all at once so well I I guess if you're worried about some pop-up item that you couldn't afford but you pretty much get this on the schedule and and it it has to be flexible and we've moved we've moved purchases out we've moved this one uh, in so we do try to manage that fund we do manage the fund Okay. And, and but we need the flexibility to be able to um, move things as we, we've got a lot of changing pieces yeah. um, with apparatus right now because in having one of the things about having uh, staff coverage in, in one station um, we're getting less response from <clears throat> say the south end um, and so we're, we're getting heavy use on the vehicles that are here and, and less use on the vehicles that are in South Ware than we historically have been having. So we do swap them out. It's not like an engine or an ambulance goes and stays at that station for its whole life. So we try to manage the mileage, the hours, <coughs> um, the wear and tear, et cetera. So you're, you're saying that because <coughs> it's staffed there. That's where they're leaving from instead of the, the, instead so of the, call, instead of the volunteer guys coming to 
South Station and getting stuff. And so typically they're taking the call and maybe supplementing with other apparatus yeah. or if somebody happens to be closer, you know, it, it, it all depends on what the call is, where it is, et cetera, who's available. Um, but it, it's, it's not, we, you know, we're just, we don't have the staff, the on-call staff that, you know, because of our call volume, mm -hmm. you know, it's getting busier and busier. So it's really, really hard to, there's a lot of pieces to that. It's, you know, training, the commitment, to the increased volume, the win increased training, all that. So, um, um, you know, the town's moving toward uh, coverage in the station. So we're just manage. That's part of the management piece to keep things, uh, you know, moving forward the best we can. What um, year so. is the vehicle you're replacing? Do we have that, Beth? <laughs> is it a? Is it like a twelve ten or? 10 to 12, somewhere in there. The Chevy's a nine. Oh, nine? Oh, nine. Okay. So it's. And is, is the <coughs> size or the scope of the ambulance different than what you currently have? So we, we don't have the van front look kind of lighter duty we've gone to a little more heavy vehicle um and i wouldn't call it a medium duty truck but kind All of drive i'm not sure if that will be no. you're not sure oh, the one that we have no the one you're buying i don't i don't have the answer to that okay. i believe the last one that we bought was that was a pickup cab and uh this one is a Chevy 4500, mm -hmm. so they don't make that chassis anymore, and uh, I believe that one's a two-wheel The one you drive. currently have. Yes. All right. Um, and will this price include uh, all new equipment in there, or are you going to bring over some stuff out of the 09? Um, like the ventilator or whatever you call it? Yeah, so, well... The equipment that goes with the ambulance typically comes with it. Um, I, I'm not sure about the cot because I know we got new cots last year, I believe. And so I'm not sure if that will be transferred over. I'm just trying to figure out, is the 350 for the vehicle, is 50, 350 for the vehicle, and I'll fit it up? It should be. I, would, I will just make sure, but I believe it's going to be fitted up, except the monitors are separate. What monitors? The cardiac monitors. So you bring that over? Yeah. Well, we're the next. The next uh, presentation will be those. Okay. Set so. more request. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm trying to figure out what he wants with this one. Uh, yeah. Okay. <coughs> but like you said, the cots are new. We just bought those last year or something, right? So. The cots. Yeah. We bought two cots last year that uh, they're sit way different than. Um, yeah, the, the back savers ones for yeah. The, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is there a know. special rail that they were? Okay. I, I honestly, I, I, I haven't seen them, so I don't. I just, uh, I was off the board for a couple of years. I'm just have just gotten back on, and so I'm trying to get back up to speed. Plus, I haven't used any of that type of equipment for about seven years. So, are we done on the ambulance? Is there any more questions or comments? I just like the mileage, and we should get a profile of your budget on your yep. uh, what do you call it, uh, revolving fund or whatever it's mm -hmm. called. Special revenue. Special revenue fund. Again, I'm I know I'm a poor uh, fill-in, so I apologize for that. Anything else on that? All right. Then we have the cardiac monitors. <coughs> and plural. There are two. Okay, 
Um, so this is for the two cardiac monitors, which there's one for each ambulance. So you're going to upgrade both? So. Yes. Um, so those uh, monitors now, um, this is a kind of a planned replacement. Um, the current units are 10 plus years old, it says right there, and at the end of the life cycle. I know that we had one repaired recently, and they were able to repair it, but they said that, um, the, like, if the motherboard goes, you can't get those anymore. Um, so they were strongly recommending that we replace them. And you want to replace um, both vehicles at the same time so you don't have a training issue? Yes. One of the, Well, so they were bought at the same time when they were bought, and we generally like to do that because having two different styles, accessories, all that, it's a lot harder on people to be able to jump from one to another. Um, so, and they are. And how old are these when they originally bought you? It know? says they're 10 plus years old here. Um, they're they're the worth anything? What are you going to do with them? Is there any value to them? What are you going to do with them? Um, if there's any value, we'll, we'll probably trade them in toward the new ones. Um, I don't know if if other agencies that aren't necessarily emergency agencies would be interested in them or be able to yeah. to utilize them. Um, <clears throat> but we, we don't. It's not like we can go get another one if if it fails and we're on a call. So, yeah, I don't know if there's any other, like the school or anything else in town yeah. uses them. Or would... Well, these, are, uh, these aren't like the AEDs that are out there. Oh, okay. Those are specifically for uh, untrained people to use. Mm -hmm. Well, you follow the instructions. Right, right, it, right, right. It's good to be familiar with them, but this does a lot of things that those AEDs don't do. It, you can see the rhythm. Test for O2 sat. Um, some of them will do like other gases in your system and stuff, and it, it does a lot of things for you. Um, yeah. Pacing, if you need it, things like that. So um, they're they're about well, they were about this big, so they're pretty portable. So you could take them like in a house or in a building, and but then you know carry them with you, so that they're not attached in the ambulance. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to just. You know, I'm sure the new ones will be out. smaller. Yeah. Was this planned for this year? I believe so. Okay. Do you? That's. I mean, I don't thought of for a while. What's that one broke this year? I know it was a push to get it in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then that. I mean, the, I mean yeah. my question was: Was this out in 2023, and you're pulling it back like the ambulance? I can't. I can't answer that question, but I'll. I'll find out for you. Or the question is, were these requested at all sometime in the future? You know, if this is a 2024 because you had a breakage or the aging. We, we should have had this on, on some kind of a cycle. Yeah, I'd have to look back at last year's and, and tell you that, or, or I can ask the question. It's not, I wouldn't, I would be surprised if it was totally out of the blue. Okay. Anything else on those? Any questions? Yeah, he had them scheduled. Oh, he actually had them scheduled for 2022. Go ahead, it's okay. It was on 2022. Good. Thank you. Same price. All right. That would be, that would be good. <laughs> Actually, any time would be fine. Okay, this is for mobile and portable radios. And um, so if you just go down to the what's the purpose, plan systematic replacement, first line equipment to provide public safety and minimize operational costs. Units are currently 20 years old at the end of life cycle. 
Um, so this replaces all the two-way equipment. Um, and so there's... How many units you have that you're replacing? The quantity of these. Do we have those? Yes. Yeah. We can hear you. So while she's looking for that, um, so this is, we put that in for 2023. And right now we're showing the funding from the ARPA funds for that. ARPA? There's 35. 35 pagers, 35 portables, and six mobiles. Say that again, 35 pagers. 35 portables and six mobiles. Mobile is in a vehicle? Yes. Portable is on your Hand belt. Held. And <coughs> you still use pagers? Yes. Huh. I thought they were. In the Smithsonian, I didn't know they actually used them. You must have an app for your phone. So, uh, I, I, I'm not <laughs> sure the new technology, I'm sure there's a new technology there, but when, you, when, when I think of a pager, I think of the old, yeah. you could yeah. dial a number, put your number in, it would beep, beep, and they would yeah. see the number. These pagers are actually like radio receivers, so they, they are, and they're tone activated, so yeah. like if you're at home yeah. and you, uh, you're a sleeper, or you don't want to listen to everything that's going on. So when they activate the tone that there's an emergency or an announcement <clears> they want you to know, it opens up that receiver and the pager. And so, um, you know, it used to be you had a receiver in your house that received everything. Then they had tone-activated receivers, but if you weren't in the house, you wouldn't know what's going on. So for probably the last 40 to 50 years, they've had pages that you could carry and also listen to the radio, so they're more than you know just a when pager. The, this equipment was bought. Um, I'm not sure about all the pagers, but I believe the uh, radios. I know that we got um, there was a lot of money after 9/11 because communication during the incidents of 9/11 were a huge issue. So there was a, a big push, and the state uh, actually provide or it was either the state or the federal government provided pretty much all new portables um, so you're going, and, and so mobile radios. You probably don't know what the model for the new one is, do you? I do not. Okay. I think I think the police have the APX sixty five hundred with uh, six six thousand, I think. And I think that's the one that does you know it's programmable. Yeah, it it and it, like everything else, even you know, you buy a smart TV and it's two years old and you think you have the latest technology and you find out it's obsolete. I, I have no idea how, <coughs> you know, what different technology there is now, but, um, okay. Yeah. So, so you, you got the same number of portables as pagers. So I'm assuming 35 people have these things. And do they have both? Do they have a pager and a portable type thing? I believe so. And again, the pager is like this size. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. No, so I, I understand what you're saying. You can carry it around. Yeah. The mobile, you know, the portable radio it's is three times but the size. You, if you're like in your car and you need to talk to on the radio, you have with the pager, you don't have the ability to communicate. It's only that. one way. So, um, and also, part of the communications issue that we've that in for safety is that every person at the call should have their own radio in case they need to call for help right you know it used to be oh, no, i understand that it used to be the officer or the crew and say the fire department would have the portable you wouldn't want to have a guy in a burning building and, and needed help and couldn't call for it yeah so but your crew could get separated <laughs> so, and that happens so um everybody for uh standards now has to have their own radio yeah so they they but they the benefit is they're able to talk like from their own vehicle if they don't have a mobile radio too, so. Any questions on that? Okay. You're being very good to me, I appreciate it. Well, we're not done yet. I, <laughs> I can always run. <laughs> Naomi, get the door. <laughs> I, okay, the next, I, oh, hold on a 
one second. Let me check. I'm trying to go in order here, so. Uh, okay, so then um, the next item is the utility truck. was scheduled for last year and we moved it back um, so we're looking at now so when you say utility is this the f-350 utility pickup Is this the F-350? Yes. So this this is um, is it 04, I believe. Oh, this or is three. The, next year. So, uh, the current the uh, utility truck, the Ford F-350. Two thousand three F-350. Oh three. Yep. Okay. So. Um, do you have any idea on the mileage? No. I do not. I know that um, we we had not recent, you know, like last couple of years, but before that we had to put a substantial amount of money into it. Um, it rust and things like that are, are starting to. That's the, that's the one you put off. the aluminum flatbed yeah. on? Yeah. 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 And so we did push it off. It was scheduled for last year, and then we pushed that off. And so we're in 2023, so not this year. Next year is what we're looking at. But again, we try to. This is a 20 year old truck. Yeah. So we try to, um, you know, give you the whole story um, of what we're looking for. And this will be paid out of your special revenue fund? That's the plan. Okay. Any questions on that? So basically, this comes with plow. It has a plow. Yeah. Okay. So and the new one will come yeah. with a plow. Okay. Yeah. Is it a pickup or just a cabin chassis you're going to put? Uh, I'm not sure. Sorry. No, I, I, I don't know if the plan is to transfer the bed <coughs> on that one over or if we'll just go with a pickup. We we oh, did so that bed because the, bed? yeah yeah we did that one because the old right. pickup bed rotted, was rusted rotted. out. Yeah. So. All right. I, you know, I, I'm not sure. I, I don't think you could get a $75,000 one with a new bed. Uh, I get an update. Yeah, I, I, you know, it, it, is, it is amazing what state bid will get on some vehicles. It kind of depends on the quantity. You know, they have, you know how it works, right? Yeah. They have the list. And if the state buy, or towns and cities chip in and they buy a lot of those vehicles, then it's amazing how it's pretty much popular, they take off popular the vehicles so you probably yeah. get a pretty good price on that yeah, yeah. so um, you know that we'll see what happens but like the the uh, I know the police vehicle well the base on the Tahoe was like thirty seven thousand dollars for the vehicle itself yep. so this vehicle if whatever outfit we do probably wouldn't be like that extensive as, as something like that via the police vehicle was so um but i can give more information for you yeah i think i think buying these vehicles is going to be a bit of a crapshoot especially two years out so because you don't know what the hell the price is going to be no but you don't know if they're going to have chips <laughs> no but that's part of that that's part of the management that we try to do to, you know, uh, yes, help with all of that. And so if we're ready to move on. I'm ready. Okay. We're moving out in years? Yes. And so this is another out year, which is the next uh, fire apparatus. It says fire engine. That would be the pumper. Mm -hmm. I believe was moved out I'm not sure front I, I want to say originally it was in 23 or 24 um, but 
as our usage is changing um, for vehicles, um, we're trying to, you know, manage them, not just, you know, it used to be fire trucks were replaced at 20 years, period. And they were lucky to make it that far. You know, usually rust-wise and things, with the technology and the vehicles and everything, that they may be able to last longer. And as our ambulance usage has gone up, our apparatus usage has changed. Um, what year is the vehicle you're replacing? That would be engine one. Are you sure it's well, that's the oldest one. Oh, it's five. It's five, right? Are you what? replacing? What's that it? was the CRP request last okay. year. Okay. That was 2003. Okay. Sorry. Maybe maybe they're renumbered. <laughs> so. I, well, um, the in, engine one is the international. 1987. Okay. Okay. No, if if that's engine five, then that's. Well, that was in the CIP last. Year. Okay. All right. Engine five. So three. Yeah. Three. So is this? Will this this be the truck that goes out with the ambulance? Well, it, so this this is basically a fire attack truck. Oh. Um, it has water. Has a good. It usually minimum of a thousand gallon tank. Um, the, uh, you know, large fire pump has to have a certain amount of hose, uh, both hand lines and master stream uh, device, and then, of course, air packs, et cetera, other equipment, tools, things like that. So um, it, it, if you get a fire call, that would gen unless it's like a brush fire, the forestry would go out. But for most of our fire calls, that would be the first out vehicle. But don't you usually send fire vehicle uh, with the ambulance run on a vehicle if accident a lot of t yes for so something so like that placing this it, yeah place. it well so a lot of times I, I'm not sure exactly how we run we're not I'm not involved too much in operational things but we also have a rescue truck not sure I don't believe that has a tank on it so it may, but um, so for a vehicle accident, it it may be needed for the tools, et cetera. That's what I'm saying. A lot of times in like the bigger towns, you'll see an ambulance and a fire truck go to a call, and that depends a lot of times on the seriousness of the call. If it gets dispatched as a certain level of call, then they need more manpower. <laughs> so the engine basically goes for the manpower, but also once they're done with that call they're immediately in service so they can do their other calls that they need to go to um, so that we we don't really have the manpower for a two vehicle response especially initially um, so if it a lot of yeah it so somebody might have to come to the station if they need more manpower and get a vehicle to go to that call or if there were people there, they could take the truck again so that they're in service for other calls. Is this going to be an all-wheel drive vehicle? I don't know the answer to that. I don't believe so. That I know that 87 that we're talking about is all-wheel drive, and maybe that's why that one's staying. I know that's in the East Ware station most of the time now. <coughs> um, so... That could be why we're keeping that one. Okay. Any more? Any other questions? No. You got any more? Okay. Yep. Last one. The scream doesn't. The best one. Okay, this is another large truck, which is the tanker, and it's a little more um, of a specialty. Um, the, the engine that we talked about, I talked about all the equipment that it has, that that 
typically would go to the fire first and then the hoses equipment would come out they would get us close you know hopefully as practical to be able to fight the fire stretch hoses etc from it and then the tanker comes in second is it's his main job to uh, supply water um, for continued operation um, so the, the the current one that we have is 2006. there we go so um, again this this is you know it's we're showing out in 2028 mm -hmm. and so um, you know that's still a ways off um, I know one of the things that, uh, that the chief and I have talked about is do we currently the one that we have has a 500 gallon per minute pump on it so it's it's kind of designed to be full and dump the water quick and then go get more water and be supplied it, it to hook up and supply itself takes too much time so usually you have a source pump or a pressurized hydrant which we don't really have um, and so you fill it quickly this one we talked about it might be to our advantage to put a full-size fire pump which would be a 12 to 15 to uh, they actually make two thousands now that are reasonably priced on the tanker on itself. the tanker just so <laughs> that for instance if we're at the end of a long driveway and the pumper is up at the fire and they lay a line in uh, to supply themselves then instead of trying to go up the driveway and get stuck in the driveway not stuck because of mud but stuck because other equipment and everything comes in it's got to be able to leave if necessary or with a big tank it makes a good reservoir so it can supply the pumper and get fed from other tankers so it would be good to have a bigger pump on it to be able to supply the volume because in a residential fire 500 gallons a minute is about the minimum that you want you'd like to have more if you can um, so um, we thought it might be to our advantage to make it a less specialty use vehicle and more more useful um, but I don't believe that would add a lot of money to the cost compared to what the benefit of that vehicle would be but you don't think that's baked in the 450 it's hard to tell this far out you know we're we're doing our best estimate at, and, and again that we're you know we have to we're constantly um, evaluating what we have and trying to adapt to what our needs are but even and what we project they will of, be. Of your calls have changed because mm -hmm. 40 years ago there was fires and a, a few ambulance wrecks. It's been flipped. I mean, we don't really, have, with, the, with the advent of, you know, fire inspections on, you know, uh, furnaces and, and chimneys and stuff like that, building codes, there really aren't that many house fires. But you do have one. Yeah. You got to respond. Right. Whereas before, and you may not put the wear and tear on the vehicles you currently have. They may just go old, as opposed to worn out. So you, you, we're, you, technically we're getting less fires, but you. So instead of firefighters, you could call them problem solvers, yeah. and occasionally the fire is a problem. And and so that, you know, EMS is more of a of a prevalent issue, um, but you still have to be able to do that if there's a fire. Oh yeah, yeah. And so a lot of hours, you know, fire apparatus always got a lot of hours in usage on for training, and that's actually changed that you have to do more training now because you're getting less experience in a real situation, so that. It, I, I'm just <coughs> guessing that the usage may not be going down as fat as much as the call volume looks like okay. and so it it's instead of getting your training on going to a call and then evaluating what was done and what was well went well and what didn't you're having to do more and more and more training to get that experience that you're missing from doing the volume of calls does that make sense yeah as yeah what I consider and we and we still have to have the equipment to be able to do yeah. that job should it should we need should that arise so 
but again we're so that's you know part of the fire service today is you know that evolving changing um there's it happens sometimes that if you get into a replacement you know just okay we're going to replace this vehicle with a new one but that vehicle may be obsolete so uh we're trying to not fall into that trap mm -hmm. and you know so if, if you have a truck that say goes out and trims trees every day you you stay with that but if your job changes to where you need something different on the truck or whatever then and you you buy just the truck that you always did and then you're not able to do your job effectively so any more that is it for uh, today just, sir thanks <coughs> i have one question i don't know sure if yep you know the answer or not probably not. probably not you say the number of calls is going up and up and up and up for ambulance calls mm -hmm. do you have any idea how the revenue is going on an annual basis yeah <laughs> I, 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 I guess five thumbs up I figured that part. Are, are you prepared to talk about that um there is a large increase this year over last year that's for sure uh, we do estimate that it's we're estimating forecasting that it's up, going up about two and a half percent per year okay a conservative estimate yeah is that i mean is that because our town population's aging going up or aging well, they say it's the, the quality of service that the individuals are getting now. Mm -hmm. So, and it's more transporting and the types oh. of calls are more. We've also, um, a huge credit to the department too, is that billing, one of the components of billing is the services that you're able to provide. Yeah. And there's three <clears throat> levels of EMS providers. There's the basic, advanced, and paramedic. And if somebody, it doesn't mean that they just do stuff that the patient doesn't need, but if the patient needs a medication, but there's only a basic provider on the call that they, that's not trained or authorized to give that medication, then we obviously can't bill for it. But, it, and, it and it costs, of course, money for training and all that stuff. But um, to be able to provide that service and to the <coughs> department's credit, um, we have a lot of providers that have taken advanced classes, and so they're able to provide the needed skills, mm -hmm. and some of that increased revenue has come from the ability to do that. And the, not to make more money, but to be able to provide the service that the patient needs. So, But the side benefit is that it does allow us to build more money. Very so good. To pay for that. Thank you. Is there anything else? Do we have All right. anybody other than the fire? I didn't bring anything with me, did you? Oh, I'm sorry. It's just yeah, the first. Well, yeah, but it's different. Yeah. Um, it's no, that's okay. that for the first year, these two for the second year, different years. That's okay. How does the fund Frugal. stand Frugal. up to this? Huh? How does the Frugal. fund taking turns. Yeah. stand up to Well, that's why I asked for the extrapolation on the yeah. current balance. This is a plenty board request for <clears throat> money for our master plan update. Our master plan, the current one is 2005. Uh, RSA recommends, it doesn't state you have to do it, but it strongly recommends that you don't go out for 10 years with them. Obviously, we're out beyond 10 years already, and we because it takes a little while to put these master plans together, <clears throat> we, we want to do it over a three-year period because it takes some time to do the studies and all that. Um, so it's really, even if you tried to do it in one year, you probably couldn't get anybody that would be able to do it in a year. Um, so we, we've got a couple of rough estimates that, that 
$60,000 seems like a workable number. So over three years, that's $20,000 a year. Um, and by the time that would be complete, you know, four years from now, because if we do it over three years, it's going to take the end of the third year to do it. Our master plan will be, you know, 2005 to 2025. It'll be 20 years old. So we really need to address it. So this is to hire <coughs> a firm like some of the Hampshire planning. <coughs> this, 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 and there's other municipal planners out there. Yeah, it, yeah it's, right. Okay, but it's to hire. It, it's a subcontract contract. type. Right. We've tried doing a master plan committee for, over the last few years, and it just hasn't worked. Um, it, it, well, the problem with the master it, plan it, it, isn't the production of the plan. It's what you give as your input to the plan. Right. What you wanted the plan to do, and then somebody else actually writes it, reviews it, publishes it. So who's actually going to come up with the... Uh, the, 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 the uh, well, the, 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 the planner will, I'm sure, what I've seen in the past is they'll give a, a questionnaire to the planning board that we can disseminate to other, some towns have done mailings where they send the questionnaire out to every citizen in town, they, they, they get, you know, 10% reply, response back or something, what, what, what people's <coughs> ideas are, um, and it'll include that type of data in, you know for data input on on the direction of the town <clears throat> technically speaking the CIP is supposed to uh, show that we're <clears throat> meeting the objectives of the master plan right so you know and the objective I mean since 2005 it, it may have changed we don't know how do you expect the uh, project to be funded <coughs> we have the there's no budget in the planning board for it so I know but this really should be a select board request <coughs> well it, it really is a select board I mean the planning board is is not a department so so this would be certainly out of taxes for the current year yes Yes. Well, I'd like to make comments about it. Um, I know that there's a reluctance to uh, spend money for things such as this um, with the voters, and but I think that the voters also look to leadership to guide them and re make recommendations, and um, so this is more of a strategic planning move and less crisis management. <coughs> And so I heartily endorse us updating the plan. It is needs to be done. And from the fireside perspective, although I'm not, I'm not speaking on behalf of the fire chief or the board, but just from my own experience in the fire service, there's a lot of things that go into that that we need to have information on as well, because we like uh, station planning. Um, as a town grows, we have guidelines for response guidelines. But again, if you, do we put money into a station here, there? Do we put money into an old building, or do is it the if it's the wrong location to start with? Then you need to start making plans. And the money that we spend, the twenty thousand dollars, we will probably save. I don't know how many fold over, in um, not doing something over again that shouldn't have been done in the first place. Money that was spent. Um, I'll use the highway garage for example. We we got turned down for the engineering and plans for that, and because of the extra work it took to once we got the the money voted for, we lost. A, it was about twenty twenty to twenty five thousand dollars was the request that got voted down, and I in my estimation we lost about two hundred fifty thousand dollars in value from the time we got the money voted for till the time the building was built because of increased construction costs. And so that was a case of, you know, 10% of the money could have saved 90% of what we spent on it. So, um, you know, I think I, 
I think that it's a good idea to do strategic planning, set goals. You know, your, your master plan can help guide the selectmen and the other departments in setting goals and establishing priorities. Any other questions? Off the hook, Bruce. Good. Thanks. <laughs> Take a seat. Good job, Bruce. You want me to do my thing quickly? Yeah, we don't know what we're doing. You can <coughs> This is like committee day. Yeah, I guess it's committee day. Huh? <laughs> uh, John, you may want to relocate. <laughs> oh, I didn't bring that down. Well, what I are we going to do? It it I think you just going to talk about it. Oh, why talk? There's no pictures. Oh, man. Oh. Well, I didn't bring down your presentation. Well, I meant you have it electronically so we can put up there. I do. Oh. That's, that's her computer, not mine. Well, do you have it? We can do it next meeting. Hang on, we'll see if we can find it. She's gonna let it should be your favorite presentation. Well, you got ten minutes, right? Nine minutes. <laughs> we should let him do it now, so we get the time limit. <laughs> Something was, it was pretty pink this morning. I was a little nervous. <laughs> the sun was over the horizon. We need rain. We need rain. <laughs> <laughs> I was just kidding. <laughs> I thought that would get a reaction. <laughs> we didn't even have any red seasons this year on fire, did we? I mean, in the beginning. July 1st, it started no, raining, we hadn't stopped. <laughs> we were still in drought yeah. in yeah, June, June. Yeah. Yeah. and then the rains came. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was more than 40 days and 40 nights. <laughs> I heard Concord, I don't know if it's true, but I heard Concord had 29 inches from July 15th to September 1st. Yeah, we're, supposed to get it. A, we're supposed to get an inch a week, <coughs> and it kept coming after that. Yeah. <laughs> Saved a lot on fire calls in the woods this this summer. I don't know if you could start a fire if your life depended on it. <laughs> yeah. sure. no, you have to really work <laughs> at it. Hard to stand start a fire in the lake, right? <laughs> What's the difference? 475? Somewhere around 475, <laughs> right? Yeah. What's that per year? No, so that's going to be the balance that I forecasted December 31st. Oh. You guys want to spend four and a quarter on that? Well, that's, that's, that's why I said yeah. we, we weren't sure that technically we should have the money. And that's as of today. Right. But 
you know, still got three again, months. still got three months. Right. Yeah. And, the number number and we don't like to draw it. Right. drop substantially for no reason. And we don't like to draw it down too far. <clears throat> so right. In yeah. case something happens that is unforeseen, so should be a pretty predictable monthly income based on yeah, it's, his, historical data. Yeah. I mean, we all make those decisions in our own budget. Oh, Do yeah. we buy a new car and deplete everything we have for emergency, or do we you know, oh, yeah. have a payment or two? And you know, so again, trying to do the best we can, but be flexible and not hard-nosed about this is the way we're going to go um, to try to do the best job well, we can. When I was running the numbers yesterday, it looked like you guys had two years of no requests which supplies the fund but that's why we go and that's why we do the out yeah. years because it's it's um you know those are large purchases coming yeah. up and so you know yeah, you're we, not going to collect all that in a year no. so uh, like in 2004 and 2000, 2024 2025 you don't have any requests which gives that fund ample yeah. time yeah. to get ready for that engine yeah Yeah, where I used to work, we did the CIP, and they went out six years. And so we did a 25-year plan, and they didn't want to see it. And, and we're like, well, in seven, in seven years, we're looking at a new ladder truck for a million dollars. Do you, do you want to know that <laughs> now so we can start planning for it? And they were like, okay, we'll see the plan. <laughs> so, you know, that's, I mean, if, if you're looking at, you know, like say a loader, a grader, and a fire truck in the same year, it, it's good a to, big number. to have some planning. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's. You can just advance when I ask you to. Yeah. I'm an executive retired. He had, he had minions for that. Do you have, have um, no, no, yeah. He's going to delegate his authority. Yeah. <laughs> Some days I didn't even show up. Presented by Jack. Oh, I can edit that. Jack Dibbon. You guys might want to send those to me. Oh, she might want to adjust the camera. Will the camera show the screen? The oh, we, we did Monday night, yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Up and down. Up and down. <coughs> Same thing we showed Monday night. Thank you. I see I'm going to move you. over here. <laughs> All right. Let's do Welcome to my world. Uh, back in uh, December 23rd, 2020, uh, the school, uh, the um, Board of Selectmen uh, hosted a uh, Motorola uh, Zoom to pursue uh, new upgrades to the uh, uh, emergency uh, services uh, radio system, the Town Aware. Uh, since that point, I worked with uh, the stakeholders, PD and Fire Department. Uh, regarding their communication systems. Motorola and a company named Two Way out in um, communications out in Portsmouth. They do a lot of installs and they uh, also are a qualified supplier and installer so that it meets the uh, warranty requirements. Um, so basically what I'm going to go through quickly here is the uh, presentation I gave Monday night for the uh, select board. Uh, Speaking about, first of all, the uh, police, uh, try to find a robust solution. Uh, the town of Ware has got significant uh, hills and valleys, which, which cause a lot of problems if you're trying to uh, cover the town with uh, reliable communications. Uh, what we did come forward with is a solution that would utilize Mine Hill, which is Crown Castle cell tower. Uh, we have an agreement apparently that allows us to put our antenna equipment on top of the uh, uh, 
cell tower, and if you could actually see through those trees to be right through up on that hill. Uh, also, in order to implement a simulcast system, uh, we would recommend we need to have in Southware, and we, we place it at the fire station, a 100-foot tower, a new tower, as well as Eastware, a 100-foot tower. This gives it ability to be up above the foliage and most of the terrain so we can uh, get the coverage. And because of the uh, hills and valleys, especially on uh, Chase Park, that's really down in the valley. And if you didn't have a receive site, and I'll explain what that is, or a cleft, you'd have a lot of missing area around the lake of Chase Park and everything to the south of Clough Dam. That's really shadowed by the dam itself. Uh, every effort was made to avoid uh, any unnecessary towers. And uh, also, we would require some um, significant costs for uh, fiber optic telephone lines. We would use microwave connections for that. And also, we want to make sure that we don't have to purchase any private power property, pay rental. Or if we did buy a piece of property, we wouldn't want to put a, a mile road in to get to the top and put all the power and utilities. So we try to be mindful of minimization as far as the infrastructure goes. Just for everybody's benefit, <clears throat> this is a simulcast of simultaneously broadcasting, meaning that you have two towers. In our case, we have three towers and they're geographically spaced so that we get the appropriate coverage across tunnel wear. Uh, the, the issue with this is what, when you transmit, all the towers transmit exactly the same time. And that's kind of a trick to get the timing down in the, in the microseconds so that you don't have uh, one transmission stepping on the other. Everybody gets the chance to hear it at the same time. So this is the issue on the simulcast system versus a single tower that we have today. Uh, this is kind of like the blo simple block diagram. Uh, I guess we're down for the count on this one. Uh, Eastware stations up top, uh, Southware stations on the bottom. Uh, Mine Hill is the, uh, the controller station. To the left for the fire is Mo at Wolf Hill in Deering, right off 149. To the right are the two, and the yellow is, excuse me, the, the red is uh, fiber optics connection to the two receive sites, Clough and Chase Park. This shows the block diagram. Uh, this is, if you look down on Google, these are the locations, and everything to the right, uh, the one going to the left to uh, Deering, is for a future connection for a capital system. We'll get into that a little later. The four on the right, the two greens and the two reds, the greens are the fiber optic connection, excuse me, the, um, the green is the um, microwave connection. And because we can't hit a microwave shot to Chase Park or, or Clough Park, uh, Chase Park or Clough, uh, we're gonna have to use fiber optics connection which is through the regular telephone company. Just give an idea, m most people think of a radio as like a CB radio, you know, fits on your dash. Well, these are actually racks of equipment. The rack is, that equipment is 19 inch wide, can be up to 20, 20 inches deep, 22 inches deep, and you stack them in a rack, you screw them in there, and you need a shelter or that has a rack in it to accommodate. You can see Mine Hill has got the most equipment. Uh, it has all the timing signal stuff. <coughs> and the remote sites in the form of um, uh, Eastware Station and Southwest Station has some of the equipment that Mine Hill has and even less out of Chase Park and Clough. Uh, Wolf Hill is on the left-hand side. The reason for the green showing uh, microwave links and the, and the purpose for the red is to show uh, <clears throat> fiber optics. Uh, this is kind of a simple view of how the microwave pass would work. Uh, the one on the left of feet, uh, fire department, in case we do that. Uh, Mine Hill to Eastware to Southware. 
and it was the height of the antennas was predicated on the terrain in order to get the uh, microwave sh sh straight shot. For anybody who doesn't know, microwave is like a parabolic dish, and you have a receiving parabolic dish, not unlike a flashlight where you try to concentrate the beam in one direction, and you hope to hit the other device, line of, truly line of sight. I don't have my little thing work and the battery crapped out. But Mine Hill is on the left. You see the elevation. Southware Fire Station is on the right at the top of a 100-foot tower. So you'll see just skimming over the treetops is the direct line of sight that the, that the microwave tower would make. Now, practically speaking today, there is a UHF connection down here. Sorry, my back. Right here. And the tower is going to be 20 feet lower today. They're going to put an extension. Castle Crown is going to do that. So even today with the UHF return path, <coughs> it's plowing through all those trees and that profit. And that's why our system doesn't work. Our, our receive an, transmit antenna and our receive antennas are not high enough to get reliable communications. This is done. This is like you took a slice of the earth um, and looking at sides. So mine hills here. So you can see where just by putting a 100-foot tower in software, we're just barely making it through the trees. Every time you go through trees, you have an attenuation, scattering of the signal. You lose the power on the other end. That's the, that's the issue with the town aware's current system. So that looks like it's assuming the tree height is 50 feet tall? Pardon? That looks like it's assuming the tree height is 50 feet tall. Well, that's probably not exactly the scale. There was some... No, you look at the bar on the left-hand side. I'm just side. saying, that's to approximate the tree line. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Based on the Google map. Yeah. So they took Google map, and they have, a, they have an app, application they can buy, which twists it on its side. Oh, no, right. I understand that. Right? Yeah, I, I know what a cross-section is. Right. So. so this is an example of a microwave link, but it also is emblematic of what the town aware's communication is now, because most communications have to plow through uh, two or three miles of foliage and dirt to get there, and it's not going to do it reliably. Uh, if any, this is my little spiel: digital versus analog. Everybody running around with a cell phone today? It's a digital system. Anybody running around with a cell phone 20 years ago? It was an analog system. What was the problem with the analog system? It was continually blasting out the same power. What does the digital do? It monitors the amount of distance connectivity to a tower, and it will attenuate your portable radio, the power output, so it matches the need of it. So it makes it allows the battery to last longer. It's just a way to manage the transmission. Uh, you'll also see this little curve right here. With an analog system, you tend to lose. Uh, you tend to lose quality of your hearing with, as you go out further, the signal gets weaker. It rolls off precipitously. Whereas here, this is sort of like a NICAD battery. This is sort of like a lithium-ion battery. In other words, it works until it drops. So you get this extended coverage with a digital handheld versus the analog and also the quality. The quality of the analog of the digital signal is almost the same up to the point it stops. So whereas the analog does degrade sort of gracefully, but you don't go as far. But that's a big issue when we're talking about whether you have a digital system. Today they're all analog, okay? So another reason why the distance and the quality of the signal that's received is garbled. This is a 100-foot tower. This is, in a, this is one done at, uh, I think it's down in the old town hall. I, I had them bring me, give me a picture. 100-foot uh, tall. Uh, people have come up with the issue of the drop zones. Well, there is no drop zones, that, meaning these are designed to withstand what would be expected for environmental in the given area. Uh, 
this particular antenna was designed for 110 mile an hour, three second gust. It was also designed for an uh, inch and a half of ice. And if it was on a shore, shoreline, it would be done for wave action. Or if it was in a seismic rich area, it would be done for earthquakes. Uh, so basically, every one of those little sections you see on the tower, they're 10 feet. So the first four are exactly the same thing, just stacked up. Every time they go down here, they get a little bit bigger. And the material gets thicker, and the cross braces get thicker as well. This is the diagram that an engineer drew up specifically for this application. It's a tripod, meaning it's got three legs. It's got three legs. And these sections get progressively uh, stronger, and there's a bigger span on the three legs. And it's all delineated in that area, showing the design. So basically, the design of this is done through this ANSI TIA, American National Standard Institute, Telecommunication Industry. This is basically what everybody uses. And there are wind maps, rain maps, uh, taken at the national level. So given your exact site, they already know from a history standpoint what the design requirements are. And as a result, they would design this uh, tower for that particular environment as you have. And if it falls down a, at 110 miles an hour, I'm sure the buildings and the, and the power lines will already be down at 90. So this is meant for this kind of a terrain. Now, when they come out to do this, they would actually look at the topography because software kind of hides behind a hill. There's a, uh, uh, there's a hill behind it, whereas uh, Eastware is sort of a flat plain compared to that. So it has different design parameters, but this is essentially uh, what it is. An example, a working example, it was done in 2000, uh, 2020, 2019, I think it was. This is the base. This is the base, and what you saw coming out of the ground was a seven foot square, uh, seven by seven, um, and, the, and the feet kind of fit in a six, six foot. And you'll see here, there is a foundation starting at four feet, coming up 18 inches, cutting back, coming up seven, uh, coming up the rest of the uh, distance, two and a half feet. And then there's all kind of rebar. This is all designed for the soil type. So we have a geotech analysis done out of the site. They'll dig the hole and they will analyze. Uh, they need at least, I think the term is 5,000 square, 5,000 pounds per square feet of support from the soil so they can put that 11 foot by 11 foot 6 by 11 foot 6 pad down four feet then they fill up over it so the proximate weight at the bottom holding that tower up is uh, 55,000 pounds and the tower weighs probably 4,000 pounds so there's quite a quite a base associated with it so it's, it's designed not to fall over basically uh, anybody know what a microwave length is? Basically, two of those antennas on the left, it looks like a, looks like a flying saucer with a cover on it, and we used to have it as kids. Uh, they're basically pointed exactly at the receiving. So it's basically a direct line of um, electronic energy and being received. Uh, the speed of it is very well known, uh, so you can use it as the critical timing loop. We'd like to get this so we don't have to rent microwave line, uh, excuse me, fiber optic lines. They tend to get expensive because you got to pay for them every month. We try to minimize that. So right now we have three of these, we have two of these links for the town of Ware PD. We'll need another one if we go to my, uh, Wolf Hill. Uh, this is a coverage map for the police digital system. We don't have a coverage map of today. It doesn't exist. It was basically we got this much money, where do we have a location? We put repeaters. The repeaters were placed for a place for geographically 
space for opportunity, not where they should go. And the height of the antennas were half the, halfway up the trees, so we don't have the $25,000 we requested last year would have paid for an analysis to show just what it is today. We don't have that. But what this is, this is what it would be if we implemented a digital system with three towers and two remote sites. You see Chase Park is a remote, Clough is a remote, Mine Hill is the prime, Southware and Eastware are the other towers. Town of Ware basically comes right here. And I got a slide, so this is how far it's spread. <coughs> 100 watts of power will go way across the county and out across other counties. It actually covers a lot of New Boston, too, by the looks of it. It does. Yeah. It, it, matter of fact, you'll see it later. It's all about having the right placement of the antenna, the tower, and the antenna on the top, and having the right height and the right placement. Now, we were constrained by using properties that we owned. And one of the things we also looked at was <coughs> having power available so we don't have to put a mile of power or fiber optics to get there. That's, or constructing a road. Let's say if we had a piece of property on top of a hill. We'd have to pay a lot of money just to even get the, up to that point. So the whole intent here was to minimize the infrastructure cost. This is the town aware coverage, excluding all the other. This is the border of the town aware on that map. And this is if we had mobile means vehicle. If you've got 100 watt in a vehicle, key the mic, you get 100% coverage of the town aware. Here's Lake Horace here. Uh, this is River Road here. The next slide is if you had a three watt handheld. Okay? This is like if you're out in the middle of the woods chasing somebody or somebody's lost in the woods and you need to make the communications and you only have three watts of power on your handheld. This is a hundred watt in the vehicle. Oh. Keep going. Keep going. No, no, keep going one more. We have duplicates. We did this before, right? We did this one there we go. You gotta suit up. <laughs> this is the same map. But see that little spot right there? You see that little spot right there? Those are the only places in the town aware that the Longley Rice propagation study that was performed to create this map showed that the probability of getting there is not super reliable. But those are tiny little spots, and they could be caused because when they took the LIDAR database, which is fancy way of saying an aircraft flew over the property, town aware, with a laser. And this laser, frequency of the laser, goes right through foliage and penetrates the ground and gets the reflection back. So you know where the aircraft is, you know where the, uh, in terms of space, GPS, and you can know how long it takes for the uh, laser to get back to you. That gives you the altitude or the topography. And you know the angle of the microwave during the sweep, uh, the laser doing the sweep. So you come up with this map, and then they take this map and create a database, and then they put the antennas at the given heights on this topography, and they, and they generate this output. This is a propagation study. This is an actual map. So basically, if we didn't have Chase Park or Clough, most of the area around here would be colored in like the lake, because the lake's at one height, and it usually has steep banks going down to it. So you would almost see the profile of the lake that wasn't able to be used for the three-watt handheld. Putting a receive station there, and likewise, coming down here in the river valley, where River Road is, the dam right here is high enough so that Eastware would be shadowing that area, wouldn't be able to penetrate. So we put a receive site on, on uh, <clears throat> those two receive sites are basically allowing the path going back for the three watt handheld, you know, 133, the power of a mobile, uh, to be able to receive. They can't make the trip all the way back. So basically with three main towers, well one we 
have use of called Mine Hill, putting two up, uh, southware and eastware, and two using these same towers that currently where a repeater site is at Clough, and powers there as well. We can implement a five site system to give essentially 100% uh, for vehicle communications and for all, all matters 100% for the three watt handheld. That's an important feature. If anything else, this is the most important slide of the presentation with the police. Now, going on to the fire department, while I was it's sort of like, you know, if you got somebody open up for an operation, taking the appendix out at the same time is pretty simple. You know, you're already going to open up on the slab, right? So this is the situation right now. We already have the LIDAR maps for the tunnel where uh, Motorola ran a um, uh, Longley Rice propagation study for the capital system, okay? And we said, what would, we, what would the town of Ware require to have 100% coverage for the town of Ware uh, for their analog simulcast system? Again, same thing, want a robust solution. Uh, we're looking to expand capital system. Location of the towers, we're constrained to town accessible or capital systems property. That's why Wolf Hill, Wolf Hill came into play. And the last statement is basically minimizing cost of infrastructure of building towers and power lines and fiber optics, even building roads. So this is what capital system looks right now. <clears throat> And it's capital because it's a concrete-based system. There are towers out here, 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 all around us. We currently don't have one in the town of Ware. So basically, <coughs> the town of Ware is <coughs> right here. You see there's a lot of gaps, River Road. This as an example of um, uh, Lake Horace. So basically, the southern part of the town is cut off which happens to be the most population. So if a town of Ware was to put a single um, transmit receiver on Mine Hill for the fire department's frequency, it would change from that to that. So now, it's a little dramatic because it came in in size, but still, if you go to town of Ware now, you don't see any voids for like Horace, you don't see any voids for Southware uh, coming down through the, um, the river valley there on River Road. Even all the southern towns, the Boston, have got excellent coverage. And this is with vehicle 100 watt, analog vehicle 100 watt versus the digital. I don't know why um, the capital, all their radios are programmable to digital. I just don't know why they don't go over and get much better communications, but that's the way it is. And this all exists, and you pay a fee to join the club for their dispatch. This is what the town of Ware looks like uh, with a 100 watt vehicle radio using capital, complete. This is what it would be like is if you used capital with a handheld. This looks a lot like the police if you didn't have it. In other words, you don't get down in this river valley here in River Road. You don't get in the shadowing over here of Mount Williams. You don't get in the deep area here for um, um, Chase Park. And here's the backwash area of the dam. And you got a piece up here. So from a standpoint of rather than spend all the money to upgrade the fire for the town of Ware, you could incrementally add just one transmitter receiver on Mine Hill and effectively take advantage of all the other sites because sort of like having flashlights pointed at a single point, if you can't make it with one, you get it with another. Like if you're in the room, you'd have shadows. So you have a chance of hitting it. If it went back here, 
you'd have a lot better chance locally if we implemented Mine Hill. Wolf Hill is located over on 149, uh, in Deering just outside of the town of Ware. It's like six miles away from Mine Hill. So uh, the feasibility of implementing this is there. Technology is there. Now the real question is, what's the cost? <clears throat> this is the way it works. Motorola's piece of this uh, for, the, for the electronics for the most part is seven, seven or eighteen thousand dollars. <coughs> this is for the police digital system. Two-way communication would do most of the antenna placement, or probably even the purchasing of the antennas. They're fairly they're mechanical device. Uh, the wiring going down. If you need a tower, they would build the tower. They would hire the contractors. All this. So that's what two-way is. So basically, when we were told back last time they were here in 2020, Motorola was in person, um, they said a simulcast that the cost about a million bucks. At the time, you didn't know that you needed the two receive sites. So that's why it's up a bit. Now, if we were to take advantage of capitals for the fire department, uh, it wouldn't use the east wear or the south wear or the two receiving sites. It would basically use uh, Mine Hill as a location, and that's why the price is down. Location for the transmit receive to expand the capital system and the rigging and all that stuff on Mine Hill and on Wolf Hill. Wolf Hill has to have a microwave dish pointing towards Mine Hill and Mine Hill has to have one pointing back to Wolf Hill so that there's a communication ring there. And that will allow the Town of Ware fire to expand capital by those two things, microwave tower on uh, upgrade on Wolf, because Wolf Hill's already got the transmit receiver. We're just adding on to it. And the total is $209,000. Uh, it assumes we're doing it at the same time as the police because there's some economy of scales here. Some of the stuff needed for this on Mine Hill is already paid for here. Just the way I broke it out. <clears throat> um, I did take a swipe at doing Benji's DPW, but I didn't get a cost from uh, two-way. It's basically putting an antenna up on Mine Hill. It's not very complicated. So Now, um, I did talk to Motorola and Two-Way after the Slackman's meeting. And there is a way, if the town of Ware wanted to go forward with just the police, <clears throat> uh, when you have to go back on the tower again, you need to have a, essentially an engineering plan drawn up because you don't own the tower. Uh, Castle, Castle, uh, Crown Castle owns it, and they're going to give us the use of it. But if we go back there again, we've got to do a lot of the legwork again to show an install, design it all. It appears that for the future, with not a lot of transfer of funds, to make this number here such that the mounting on the tower on my hill could be accommodated. And you could, you could upgrade and include the fire station sometime later the fire communications. So I didn't do that originally, but I did have a talk. So uh, Motorola, I mean, two-way communications would go down a little bit for the fire because you're moving it into the police number, so you don't have to go and go through the whole drawing set again in order to get permission to put your equipment up there, like the microwave dish. So, and we'll size the cabinet such that it will accommodate uh, the, the, the fire in the future. So, unfortunately, this is the, uh, this is the cost, but you're going to get a 21st century communication system. And by the way, nobody installs repeater sites like we do anymore. That was a, that was a stopgap measure because nobody had the electronics capability for doing precise timing for multiple transmit antennas. That's come about in the last 20 years. 
<coughs> and basically we installed the step uh, basically the best we could afford for grants that we got fire department got grants back in 2000 I think Bobby Richards and they started populating the remote sites they work but they don't work very well uh, the problem of being transmitting through all these trees is that it works better in the winter time when there's no leaves okay unless you got snow on all the trees then it doesn't work as well uh, because you got all the water in the form of snow and and or ice and um, when the wind's blowing believe it or not it changes the radio path so it's all, all but slightly but if you got a thousand leaves between you and the transmitter and they're all swaying the quality of the signal degrades so this does away with a lot of the environmental issues we have to deal with it provides adequate height of the transmitters and it provides the PD the ability to go any place in the town of Ware with our handheld and it gives the uh, ultimately for the fire it gives them access to a professional um, dispatch function and it also gives them uh, an ability to take their vehicles put it on put it on a local repeater and communicate with their team as they do that's their that's their paradigm for attacking fires if you will uh, they drive up with a vehicle they switch to channel B let's call it and everybody can transmit locally on that B frequency and they can hear each other different paradigm of how the police operate usually there's one person going out and if they can't make it back they're on their own and I think what precipitated this was the shooting up on um, the campground up there was that way back or I don't know whichever I, the one on um, Buxton Road so anyways so that's kind of the the story <coughs> are there any um other agencies state or federal that could take advantage of the system and maybe well that's a good question uh, one of the things that um, one of the things that Marola says the minute you put these towers up everybody's always looking like state police to improve their communications uh, possibility to get some rent I wouldn't guarantee it but uh, they I mean we are trying to design this tower so that you know when you put 100 pounds on the top of the tower and where it is on the base that's called the moment if you move that 100 pounds through wind gusts it's putting a strain on that base and if you if you put 200 pounds up there it's even more of a strain so we're trying to design these towers that's not a big cost driver uh, so they're less than 50 percent rated for the weight you can put up there they may be there anyways based on the commercially available tower but we're trying to size the tower such that we're only taking advantage of 50 percent of the weight capacity for that particular purpose and if, if somebody like the um, state police or county wanted to use one of those towers it's nothing more than putting up a microwave dish and putting another cabinet downstairs and running a wire so the beauty is we got sites that already have power at the site there's fiber optics running by it uh, from the road so we don't have to do significant construction and frankly I went to see um, uh, get a map from the town that showed all town owned property a tax map and just color the and we and I scrubbed the whole tax map work with uh, Motorola and the best solutions for available power uh, easy access to the site fiber optics were southware and eastware and the two remote sites for the receivers was already the voter receiver on Clough and the uh, voter receiver up on uh, Chase Park <coughs> one more so, question yeah this capital system out of Concord you said it, you, it, it's a member type thing where is there a benefit to being a member that owns some of the towers some of the equipment for other to well when other members join if you want to join first you got to have coverage if you want coverage you got to pay for the infrastructure then you pay for the maintenance of that infrastructure through a fee and dispatch and we're already paying for a fee to Gostown uh, for their dispatch so 
Um, if you're looking at solving a communication problem, this is the way to do it. But the uh, so, so, you, so the fee would cover maintenance of the towers too. It, like you remember? Yeah, the, yeah. So that the town wouldn't have to t take care of the maintenance of the towers. That's tower. my understanding. Okay. My understanding is, uh, they take care of the infrastructure because basically Motorola done all the. I mean, did we do something here? I guess we're done. Oh no, we're not done. I think we're done anyways, but Motorola implemented, the people I'm talking to implemented capital. Mm -hmm. And 2A, I think, has done some of the capital sites, so they're very familiar with this stuff. They do this for a living. And uh, so I don't know, I mean, when we first talked to Motorola, you know, a three site is about a million bucks. and. <clears throat> The good news is we didn't have to build three towers because Mine Hill already exists and we have the access to it. We already have locations for Cap for uh, Chase and uh, Clough, which is really up dams. And uh, that's all powered. That's got, that's got um, fiber optics running by, so just dropping a line would be like hooking up a telephone. Any questions? I got a question. Yes, ma'am. Is this plan, are you... Um Erecting a hundred foot towel tower at the South Station right here on one fourteen and a hundred foot tower yes. right on seventy seven. Yes. How far from the road are we talking these hundred foot towers are gonna be? Well, I surveyed both sites. Uh Bobby Richards uh software and you know where the parking lot is? You know where the septic uh the um where the hazmat trailer is sitting right now? No, no. Um you drive in, mm -hmm. keep driving till you hit the Hit the bank. Okay. The mound. Right there. Yeah. No, the mound's on the right. Okay. Keep driving in. Mm -hmm. There's a hill that was cut basically between the driveway and that hill. It's like 15 feet. Okay, and now the town on the east? East where it can fit it too. Okay, it's just going to be right there in the open? Yeah, it'll be, it'll be galvanized steel. It'll, it'll uh, turn more of a, uh, a light gray over time. If you don't look, you won't notice it. Well, it's going to be tucked up against the forest <coughs> on South Ware. Yeah. But and East, East Ware, well, if you, if you come to the end of Sugar Hill and you're on 77, yeah. look slightly to the right and you'll see Mine Hill Tower standing right there, popped up in the distance. Uh, it's a direct shot. It's, you couldn't have placed that better to hit East Ware and South Ware. So is it going to be behind the fire station? Probably beside it. That's all. Beside the, I got to figure out where the land is, but okay. uh, it's only going to take. The actual base is seven by seven coming out of the ground, mm -hmm. and uh, well, you can look here. Yeah. The base is okay. I was just trying to think of when you're yeah. driving down <coughs> the road and the well, view is now. Yeah, but I mean, it's this big. Be. This is their old town hall. And this is the pipe going in to put the equipment inside the building. And here's, this is probably power and this is the transmit. I mean, the base is only five foot, about six foot across the triad. I mean, if not that, <clears throat> there's no other place in software to put it. No, that's, we're talking east square. East square. East where is the one. I mean, south where you can hide wow. because there's a lot of hills. Three. East In the 19th century, we had smokestacks. In the 21st century, we have <laughs> cell and communication towers. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's not a huge. I mean, the base in the ground is 11 and a half by 11 and a half square. 55,000 pounds worth of concrete and dirt on top of it. So, and the little cabinet is not very big, that houses all the electronics. And these aren't, this isn't a radio like you would see in a CB radio or even in a, in a police car. This is this thick, 19 inches wide, uh, 20 inches deep, all contained receiver, transmit receiver, and you get your timing signal and all your piping for your electronics uh, in the other one for the microwave and all that stuff. So. I know it's a lot of money, but if you want to get uh, coverage of the town of Ware, and frankly, capital, 
I mean, New Boston's got perfect coverage if we put that tower up on Mine Hill, and most of Mount Vernon. So, but that's another problem for another day. I'm just saying. This is what I presented Monday night. I just thought it'd be important to let him know. <clears throat> and I'm going to work with Motorola to see if we can, <clears throat> if we go with the police first. <clears throat> most of the structural stuff <clears throat> to accommodate the fire department, which is really bracketing, uh, could be done and all you do is add a, add a uh, microwave dish. And these microwave dishes are approximately 40 inches in diameter. They're not huge. If you go on 100 miles, they become 20 feet in diameter, but so they're relatively small. Any other questions? Bless you. Bless me. Thank you. So, am I assuming we've heard from everybody? Yeah. Okay. So, I guess next Wednesday we'll try and do what we call the whiteboard. <coughs> and. I mean, I think what we've done over the last 12 years or maybe 10 years, 11 years I've been involved with is figuring out what year and planning it out over the course. Uh, I remember people saying, can't you cut something? I says, well, we've already pushed a lot of this stuff out in the outer years. It isn't like we're buying it in one year. We push it out, we try to push it out for reporting purposes six years. But like Benji's, he's got his stuff pushed out 20 years for his re like his like a planned replacement of a grader or something so we'll try and do that next week and that should be the end I guess we're done I move we adjourn thank you one second thank you all in favor aye bye, -bye. bye, -bye.